What do you want me to clarify before we move on into writing our business plan now? Anything else? Yes, please, Rebecca, go ahead. Yes, sir. Um, uh, so if you look at the uh, business plan, the process that we, we, we went through, if you get to the element of visibility analysis, there are some things that we need to find out. For example, the industry and the market visibility. So there are some questions that we need to ask ourselves. So is it the same thing as, as at what uh, we talked about last week, that those questions under the uh, industry and market, is it the same thing? Because it looks like they are different things. For example, um, we look at who are the key players in the industry when you are going to enter into the business. And then there are some questions too after that you need to ask yourself. I wanted to find out, are there different questions that we need to do it or ask yourself? Very good question. It means that you're doing this very right. Thank you. So, in fact, the questions that I've I gave you the first day and the one I sent you on the PDF are just a few of the many, many, many questions you can you need to ask yourself. Many questions. I mean, in the same way, when a lady or a man is trying to understand which lady or guy they want to marry, the number of questions that go to your head, you can see how many questions they are. Sometimes the questions even come in from to whilst you are with the person, a question comes. A question that you're not even thought about comes to your mind, you ask the person, the person explains, and you gradually begin to understand who this person is. In the same way, when it comes to feasibility analysis, of course, there are standards. The standards are the key areas in the business that you should, you should look out for, like market industry, financial feasibility, organizational feasibility. Those ones are very standard. But as what kind of questions you need to ask, it also depends on the entrepreneur. It depends also on the kind of business you are going in for. Every business have, they would have their own questions. So, for example, if we take somebody, so one of us who wants to stay, say, start a restaurant, and another person wants to start a, a maternity home, the key areas or the key components are going to be the same. The market industry feasibility headings are going to be the same. Financial feasibility headings are going to be the same. Organizational entrepreneurial vision are going to be um, um, feasibility studies are going to be the same. Those headings are going to be the same. But the key questions that will be asked for each of these businesses will differ as you go along the, the feasibility analysis. For example, we are currently doing something for a guy who wants to go into um, alkaline water, for example, here in, um, around the uh, Sunyani Road. We never thought about the question. One day we were discussing this and the guy asked us, ah, TK, have we talked about making sure that the chief understands this business well? Because now what we are doing is something that is not normal. The kind of factory we are setting, the kind of machines we are setting up and all that is not normal. Can we go and talk to the, the, the chief? It never crossed our mind. But even though when it comes to key partners, key people that you need to run your business, the chief is very, very important, but it never came up. It never came up. Okay, so it's important for us to understand that, yes, the industries are different. Yes, the key areas in business ma management are the same. But when it comes to the individual questions, they can be different from every angle. And some of them would actually come at a point when you're executing the feasibility analysis. Becky, does it help? Okay, I think she dropped her hand. Any other question, please? Any other question? All right, so... Now let's go to talk about business planning. But along the line, if there are any questions, please raise your hand or just drop your question or comment in the chat box. I'll quickly just have a look at it and then we would, um, I'll try to answer that for you, okay? Uh, let me see if there's any question in the chat box before I move on to this. So you may raise your hand and then I will definitely help you to understand. Um, let me, the answer should be the same, okay. Um, are you is he asking that uh, sir? Please, the answer should be the same. I don't know what that one was. Okay, I think we are good to go. There are no there are no questions in there that I need to pay attention to for now. But again, you can kindly um go through, ask me questions, ask me move along with this. All right, Elizabeth, please go ahead. Sir, please. Sir, please. Uh, about uh. I, I I heard or I saw somebody writing on the chat box saying you said uh, talent alone is not enough. I didn't hear anything about that part. My network was so good. Can you please throw more light on it for me? Okay, very good. Who can help our sister with what I said about talent is never enough? Who wants to help to explain why I said talent is never enough? 
And as, as, who can help us with that? Please raise your hands and help us. What does it mean that talent is never enough? Quickly, please. Quickly. Wow. Nobody's helping me here. Okay. Thank you very much. Rita, please go ahead. So you said like um it's a book that's uh, that is written by John, uh, John the second name I've forgotten John Maxwell John Maxwell so when you read that book it will help you to know that like your talent alone is not enough like there are a lot that you have to put in to the work that you bring out for your people very good thank you very much all right uh Kathleen please go ahead. So, say what I also think about it is talent. If you have the talent alone and you are not able to uh, transform it to business, to like create opportunities for people to benefit and you also make money out of it, then it's not that's what it means by talent. If you have the talent, you have to be able to be, make something creative out of it, be able to make a business out of it. At the end of the day, you make society happy and you also have something to. And as a living. Thank you, sir. Very good. Thank you very much. Martha, please go ahead. Sir, so with the talent, if if you have the talent and you don't utilize it, it will not benefit you and the society as a whole. As it is stated in the Bible that a man was given a talent, uh, one was given five, other was given two, and the other one was given one. They all utilizing it, and at the end of the day, when the owner came, he was very happy with them. But the one who had one and hide it, he was thrown into the into the fire. So, as we have given the talent, we have to identify what God, God has given us and use it so that it will benefit us and benefit the society and the nation as a whole. Thank you. Thank you very much. Great. I love the comments and I like the answers. All right, um, please, Philip's iPhone, can you change it and add your full name and your index number? Because I'm picking attendance. Philip's iPhone, can you do that for me? I'll be very grateful. Thank you very much. All right, Gifty, please go ahead. Yes, sir. Good morning. Good yes, morning. but the talent is not enough. You even gave an example like Glowing, Nana Mama Brown. They had the talent. They didn't sit in the house and just because they had the talent, so they weren't doing anything. They, they they portray their talent out there and now they are ripping it. Now Nana Mama Graham drew her talent. She made a business of it by being brand and ambassadors to so many companies. Lorraine as well has a business, it has a school. So they didn't just lean on their talents, but they portrayed their talents out. The people saw it and they decided making make, uh, making money out of it. That's a little I'll add to all that they've said. Thank you. Great. That gives you thank you very much. Portia, please go ahead. Yeah, hello, sir. Good morning. Good morning Please, about the, um, you were talking about, first of all, discovering what your talent is. And then after that, being able to convert the talent into a product or a service. The product being something that maybe you can sell or a touchable something. And then the services, maybe like the way you are teaching us, that's something you cannot touch, but it's impact on other people's lives. Thank you. Very good. Very good. All right. So you guys have done very well. So basically, that's what we all try to talk about. Uh, my friends, Lita, maybe let me pick one more person to give true light on this. Um, Rena, please go ahead. All right. I didn't get that. So let's talk to Vida. Vida, please unmute yourself and go, uh, yourself and go ahead. Hello, sir. Good morning. Good morning. Please, what uh, with the letter I want to add, I said sometimes talent, uh, talent too cannot do all. Sometimes you need certificate. You need to educate a little. Uh, you have to top up with the knowledge that you have before you can open or set up a business. Thank you. Very good. Very good. Okay. So now you guys have done quite well, and I'm seeing that the understanding is gradually coming in. So when we say talent is never, never enough, it goes with the first 
way of identifying a business idea. And we said that to be able to start a business, the one of the best ways is to look in yourself internally to find out what are your gifts, what are your creative potentials, what are the things about you that makes you unique. And then once you have got that, that becomes your talent, that becomes your creative potential. And John Maxwell, after writing his book, Talent is Never Enough, said that, yes, it is good that we all need to have some ideas, have whatever it is, have some talents, but that alone cannot make you who you really want to be. You must identify that talent, you must polish it, you must work on it, you must develop the skills, you must go to school, you must have the right people, you must do something to polish up this goal that you have found in you. And once you have been able to go to all the fire, the training, the skill set, and everything else, and you have polished your, your skill set, this skills, this talent now becomes a gold. And that's where you actually mine from and become rich and become wealthier. And give example of many of these. That's what you basically mean. All right. So now let's go and talk about business plan. And today, I wish I have time, or if you don't finish, probably we'll, we'll continue from next week. There are two things I want to introduce to you. First of all, I want to talk about the original business plan that we had, the traditional business plan. And then we talk about the lean business plan, the one-page business plan. And I'm not showing you showing you slides. I just want you to write your own notes so they can understand, and later on, I'll send the recording back to you. Now, after you have got your idea, now I want to start... Um, um, let's say I want to start. Let me use one of my, my small boys, one of my clients who have just who, that I work for. He has a business called Relax, we will serve you. Relax, we will serve you. And this relax we will serve you. It's um, you know, funerals. We have these guys who go to funerals and go and serve the ushers, the ushers that we have at the funeral grounds. Now we have professional guys who do some of these things today. So this guy, um, that's what he does. That's the kind of business that this guy is. So I'm going to use that as an example as we run through all this discussion. Now, once you have found this idea, for example, and you want to do this business, you must find somebody or you yourself must write a business plan. And a traditional business plan is nothing but a document that now translates your thoughts into a document. Takes all the thoughts that you have in your head about your business onto a document. Once you're able to, you are able to put that onto your document, that document is called a business plan. Why a business plan? Because it is a document that's going to guide you to manage your business well. It is a document that summarizes the things that you want the business to be done with. It's, it's actually documented. Many people have their businesses in their head. Many business, many people have the instinct to just run the business. So today he comes to the shop and whatever instruction that he has, he just says it. There's no documentation. There's nothing. There, there's nothing to guide them along the way. So all that a business plan does is that it guides you to do the right things with your business. It pulls the vision out of your head onto your document. It takes your heart out of your heart into a business, into a document called a business plan. So that one day when you're not even there, somebody can pick that document and they use that same, same document to run the business as if you were alive. The challenge that we have with the traditional business plan is number one, it is very, very technical to write. It's not simple. Very, very technical to write. And the minimum number of pages you can have is about 50 pages with all kinds of graphs and charts and all kinds of things, all kinds of things. And if you see how this is, maybe I will show you one of these plans that I just wrote for somebody. And again, I'm sharing this with you because it's a classified information. It's only for academic purposes. Please don't screenshot it and send to anybody. I've signed confidential confidentiality agreement with these guys. I'm not going to share with anybody else, but because this is an academic class, I'm going to share with you. So please don't screenshot and send to anybody else. All right. So let me show you this uh, one that I did for one of our clients. And I want to show you how detailed and how technical these business plans are. All right. Now, and many times because it is very technical and it needs a lot of thinking, a lot of planning, a lot of work to be done on it, many people don't write it. And they go and find consultants who write this business plan for them. Okay. So now, can you see my screen, please? Please give me a yes if you can see my screen. Please type yes in the chat box if you can see my screen. Okay, thank you very much, good. So now before I write a business plan for anybody, the first thing that I do with this client is write confidentiality agreement. And if the client doesn't sign this agreement, I will not write a business plan. I want to build my integrity. I want to let people to, let, for me, to, people to believe and trust me that when they come to our consulting firm, we are the trusted group, their business growth partner. We are there for you. So then we sign this first and we go through all this table of content. Look at from here. 
from the executive summary right down, way down, way down to balance sheet, cash flow, profit and loss account, and all these. This document alone is 52 pages. And I'll run you through this. So all these, look at all these graphs that you have to do for the client. And many times the client won't, won't be, they, they, won't, they, don't, they don't even understand. Okay? Look at all these financial that we need to do for this client. Very technical. Very, very, very technical. Write all these things. And most of the time I stay at night, deep in the night. That's when I write these business plans. I sit down at 10 p.m. And I will sit, I can, sometimes I can stay up to like 4 a.m. Still writing this for the person. So when we charge people 10,000 and 15,000 and 25,000 for business plan, please don't, don't scream. Cause it's a lot of work. See all that I'm showing you, a lot of work. This is a typical, a typical traditional business plan, a typical one. This is a break even analysis. We have to do all this for the client. You know, that's a lot. And how many of us on this call can write this business plan? That's a problem. See, 52 pages. All these, so this this the these are clients' um, ratios to determine the sustainability of the business that we are actually doing for this guy. This is the person's sales cash, the sales forecast, how much sales they can make, and all that. We have to sit down and cut this. We sit down deep in the night. We have to write all this. You no, know? I understand every single line that I, I have here, but I wonder how many of you, if I gave this to you as a business plan to run your business, I'm wondering how many of you would really really understand this. Okay, so imagine you come to me to for me to write a business plan for you and I give you this document. What are you going to do with it? What are you going to do with it? The best you can do is to ask me to help you to implement this idea. But how many of you, I mean, there are many people who don't even see the business plan, the document alone like this, they get discouraged. They totally write off the business challenge. This thing, no, 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 no. This is not something I want to do. So this is a typical traditional business plan. And because this thing is so technical to write, and sometimes it takes a long time to write. And there are times I've written business plan, got like um, 40 pages, 50 pages, and I said, no, this doesn't make sense. I go back and start all over again. It is tedious. So how long would you want to sit down yourself and write this 50, 100 page business plan before you go ahead and then start the business in the first place? You'll be frustrated. I am not downplaying the importance of the traditional business plan. That's what I'm saying. It is good. In fact, at some point in your business, you will need the traditional business plan because the banks will ask you for this kind of plan before they give you a loan. There are some individuals, before they give you money to support your business, they might want you to bring this kind of detailed business plan. But again, it is very tedious to write. It is time consuming. It is very technical. And sometimes you may have to even bring three or four or five people together to write a business plan. This business plan, for example, is for a manufacturing company. And the guy, I have to bring somebody who had worked in the manufacturing industry to be the accountant to help me with the financial services side. <clears throat> How to put the financials together. I'm sorry. <clears throat> okay. So this is it. But along the line, a professor at Harvard realized that, yes, every person has to start a business with a business plan. If you want to write a very successful, if you want to start a very successful business, you must sit down and craft something on paper, like an architect. You craft your building on a paper, and then sometimes you can now even do a 3D picture of the business, the, the building for you to see. So he said, no, can we build one, can we build the same business plan on just one page? So this guy called Alexander Osterwalder, or Alexander Osterwalder came out with this business plan, and I'm showing you the first one. Please take note as we go along with this. So Alexander Osterwalder, a lecturer at the Harvard Business University said, no, yes, my, my students want to write a business plan, but it's too difficult to write. It's too tedious. Can we help them to write a business plan in different format? So he came out with the first business model canvas. It's called BMC. That's the heading that you see up here, the business model canvas. And this business model canvas was just a one page plan that he used to summarize everything that should go into a business when you are starting. What are the critical things that you need to start a business with? What are the who are the resources? Who are the people? What activities? What what do you need to do to run this business? So on one page, on one one pager, he was able to distill the fifty page business plan on just one page. And trust me, this model you are seeing on the, on the screen has been used by many many multinational corporations, and they are still using this up to today. Multinational corporations. 
In fact, there are some businesses today, when they go into strategic sessions or strategic meetings, it is this model that they use, they print a big, a very big hard copy for them, for, for, for everyone. They put it on the wall and then the individual executives are working on that. So the finance people are working on one side, the HR people are working on another side, this person working on that side, people are working on different, by the time they finish, the team would come up with a strategic plan just on one page. I have personally used this business model canvas for many, hundreds of my clients, hundreds of them. As I talk to you today, I have not written a 100-page business plan. I've not written a 200-page business plan. I have just one page business plan. And I'm going to show you how I did it. So this canvas you see here is the first one that was introduced to us by Alexander Oster Walder, the, the, the professor who taught us how to write a business plan on just one page. Now I'm going to walk you through the other one, but I'm, I'm just trying to let you understand that this is the first model canvas that came. Any questions on this? I'm not, I've, I've not explained the key components yet. I will explain it to you, but any questions up to this point, please? Um, Rita. Okay, Rita, please go ahead. Sir, sir please, can you um, define the, uh, the traditional business plan again? My network was messing up for me. Okay, so all of you, please listen again. The traditional business plan is a written document that helps entrepreneurs or business owners to translate their vision, their passion, their business model into a document called a business plan. It is when the entrepreneur or the, the, the business owner, whoever wants to be going to business, it is when they sit down and then they take a sheet of paper and a pen or paper and a pencil and decide to now start designing their business on a document. Irrespective of what you describe on that sheet of paper or document, once it is about the vision, if it's about your ideas, it's about your business, the product you are going to sell, about the service you're going to sell, you're going to sell, sell to people, it's about the, you, are, you are describing the kind of people that you need to work with in the company, describing how you're going to sell, market the product to, the, to, other, to other people, describing how you're going to take care of your money. Once you're able to put that on, on a paper, it is called a business plan. Of course, if you do it like I've just described, if you just pass that, you just put papers, put them um, headings together and just write something. But the business plan has a structured way of doing it. And I'll send you samples of business plan for you to see. The reason why I don't want to go into so much detail to the main business plan is that if I go there, a lot of you will be confused. So I'm just giving you a description of what a traditional business plan is. It's a long document, more than 50 pages. Number two, it's very technical to write. Number three, you might even need more people to come together to write one business plan. Number four, it's expensive to write. I charge no less than 15,000 for a business plan. And sometimes I take like two weeks or three weeks. A business plan has taken me one month before, before I could finish it. And most importantly, these business plans are usually too detailed to the point that it usually scares the entrepreneurs. It scares them. And you don't even want to start the business in the first place at all. But thank God, the second part that came in was that Alexander Osta Walder came out with a one-page business plan called the Business Model Canvas. Rita, did I help? Okay. Now, when this business plan was written, Alexander came up with this. Another professor also sat down and realized that, yes, there are some things missing in this business plan. Because every person or every entrepreneur starts a business based on an idea. And that idea is always usually connected with a problem or with an opportunity. But on this business plan that you see on the screen right now, there is no problem. There's no way you describe the problem or the challenge that you saw before you started this business in the first place. Because here, you are seeing key partners, you are seeing key activities, you are seeing value proposition, you are seeing customer relations, you are seeing customer segment, you are seeing key resources. Here is channel, and then down here is cost structure, and then here is revenue streams. I'm not explaining this because once I go to explain the main business model canvas, you understand what I'm trying, the lean, the one I want us to understand to use, once I go to explain that you understand what I'm trying to do. So this, the original business model canvas had nine building blocks, nine building blocks. So these blocks that you see, maybe I will show you another screen to explain this as well. 
that would probably also help. So this is the this is the nine building blocks. Even make it easier here. You may if you want to take a screenshot of this as well, but I will send the screenshot to you when when we are done. So the one that I just show you, the one that Alexander was all that did the business model canvas. This is the these are the these are the, the blocks. Key partners, key risk activities, value proposition, customer segment, customer relations, channels, revenue streams, and cost structure. This is the original one. Good. Now you see that this this business plan. Once you're able to go through all these models, every block in this, you have a solid business plan, my friends. Trust me. You have a solid business plan, especially for people who are already in business. This is very good for them. It gives you clarity. It gives you direction. It makes you very, very focused. You don't waste time on unnecessary things. These nine building blocks will give you solid foundation to build a very solid business. Our business, our consulting firm, is thriving on something like this. And we are very clear in our mind exactly what we are doing, who we are doing it for, whose support we need, how are we making money, how much it costs us to run the business. I have this in my head. I have this on paper. God forbid, if I'm not in this business today, anybody at all can take this document and then help us run this business perfectly right without any problem. This is a lean model canvas. This is a business model canvas, actually. The first one that was done by Alex. Okay. Let me see. I think I've seen some. Okay, there's no question in the chat box. All right. Now let's go to the second one. Now, so you notice that on this block here, there are no, there's no problem. There's no block call problem. There's no a category called solution. There are some things missing up here. So another guy called Ashmuraya also came back and said, yes, guys, you have done well. But unfortunately, there are some things that are lacking as far as this thing that you're trying to do is concerned. How can we make it better? Because if somebody is starting a business, technically, this person has seen a problem or this person has seen a challenge or have found an opportunity that the person wants to run the business with. So Alexander, after he's done that, we found that Ash Maria also came up with this, the Lean Business Model Canvas. Can you, if you can see my screen, please type yes again in the chat box. Please type yes in the chat box if you can see the screen again. Okay, very good. Now, I would like somebody to read the bold black headings in all these blocks for us. Please raise your hands and read all the key blocks that you see on this. Please raise your hands and then read through the whole thing for me. All right, so let's talk to Prisla. Please go ahead and do this for us. Okay, so good morning. Good morning. Lean business model canvas. Problem, solution, unique value proposition, unfair advantages. Customer segment. Yes, please go ahead. Existing alternative. Yes, please go ahead. Oh, I think we lost her. We lost Prisla. Okay, Martha, please go ahead and do for us. The first one is problem, solution, unique value proposition, unfair advantage, customer segments, existing alternatives, key metrics, high level concepts, channels, early adoptive, cost structure, revenue structure. Very good. Now, from the first one that I showed you, the one by Alexander, and this one, the first one is called the business model canvas. This one is called the lean business model canvas. Please okay. raise your hands and tell me the difference between this and the first one. Judith, go ahead. This one has 12 blocks. Okay, 12 blocks. So what and what do you think the new ones that were added to this? What are the new, what, what is new about this? Portia, please go ahead. 
Sir, please, there's a solution. Uh huh. Is that and all? The and the problem. Very good. Do you see anything else again? What else do you see that is wasn't on the first one? Okay, Portia, you have done well. Let me ask Judith. Judith, what else do you see that is new on this? Yeah, instead of the key activities, you know, we have key metrics here. Very good. Thank you very much. Linian, please go ahead. Linian, what else do you see, Linian? Linian, what do you see? What else do you see on this business plan that wasn't on the other one, the one by Alexander? Rhoda, go ahead. Hello, Rhoda. Um, sir, please, um, existing alternatives. Very good. Anything else? And um, early adopters. Very good. Very good. Thank you very much. Let's talk to Dauda. Dauda, I can't find your thing again. Okay, Dauda, please, what else do you see? Please, on the other one, uh, we have revenue stream. And then this one is revenue structure. Okay, that one is the same. Just like the, the name that I've changed is the same thing. Okay. Yeah, thank you very much. Nice, one. nice observation. Very good one. Okay, Gifty, go ahead. Sir, um, with the lean, there is high level concepts, but I haven't seen that in the other one. Very good. Good observation. All right, who else? Anything new? Lena, do you want to speak again? Go ahead. Lena. Okay. All right, so on this screen that you are seeing, this is a second business plan, one page business plan that was developed after Alexander developed the first one. And I've told you the first one is called the Business Model Canvas by Alexander Oster Walder. The second one, Ash Maria, also a professor in the university, also saw that yes, this is good, this is really helping us. But unfortunately, it is not every, not all the key parts of the business that are indicated on the old one. So can we now have a different one? So Ash Maria came out with the Lean Business Model Canvas, and that's what you see on the screen. Now, when you see the two, both are very good. I've used both many, many times for different purposes. But I love the Lean Canvas because it helps you to be able to clearly, clearly identify what problem that you are solving, and then also be very clear in your head the exact solution that you're offering, which for me, is a foundation of entrepreneurship. The foundation of entrepreneurship is to find a problem and then find a solution innovatively. So once you're able to find an innovative solution to a problem, technically, you have started a journey called entrepreneurship. So for me, it's Ash Moria's Lean Business Model Canvas. That gives me more like the high-level concept. It gives me a better understanding of how to use this to build a business plan for anybody else. And of course, if somebody is starting a business, the best one to use is this. But if you already established your business and you're doing well, and you don't have a business plan at all, and you want to find a way to now clarify your business on one page of the business plan, you can still go ahead and use this or use the other one. Whichever one you use is always very good. But for me, I love the lean canvas because it gives me much more clarity and much more direction to move. Now, for the purpose of this discussion, I'm going to change certain headings to suit our context as far as we are concerned and as far as what we want to do is concerned. So number one, if you look on the screen, I've highlighted um, high-level concept. I'm going to change high-level concept to put in the key partners. I'm putting here key partners, and the key partners I'm putting here is because, yes, we need a high-level concept, but we need to also try to find a way to fuse other one, the two plans together in such a way that we are able to clearly, clearly know exactly what we want to do. Okay, so I'm adjusting this or adapting this not because I'm 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 changing the, the master plan, but I'm I'm redesigning this for this particular class. So it's based on this that we are going to use to describe what we are going to do. Okay, so now I've changed the high level concept to key partners. Again, I want to change early adapters to key resources. 
key resources. Please take note of all the things that I'm doing here. I've changed key partners, key, and you know, early adapters to key resources. So under the key resources, we are asking ourselves, what are, what are the key resources that you need to start this business the right way? Very good. And under the key partners, we are typing in the whose support support do you need to execute your big idea or your business plan? So what are the key partners? Who, who support do you need? Who support do you need? This could be example. It could be supply. I'll come to explain all this, so don't worry. I'm just trying to let you understand what I'm trying to do here. It could be suppliers of raw materials. Suppliers of raw materials. Or regulatory, regulatory agencies whose permission that you need. Very good. All right. Now, I want somebody to now explain to me exactly what he thinks I've done with this. I want someone to explain to me the new description that you are seeing as far as our lean model canvas is concerned. So if I was you, I will probably put here G GCUC lean business model canvas, maybe just an example. We are not creating a new one, but we are modifying the business model canvas that we knew, we know already by us, uh, Ash Maria to suit what we want to do. So I've named this GCUC Lean Business Model Canvas, technically. Right, any questions, any comments at this point? So you have seen that the key partners and key resources that are already on the, on the, uh, the first business model canvas, we have brought it here to suit our purposes. Now, the channel, you also do channel and channel, and customer, sorry, customer relationship, relationship management. I was explain all this. So this one too, I've added something to the channel. Customer relationship management. Now, somebody should raise their hand and then explain to me, just go walk me through this whole thing again. So now we have now modified our the Ash Maria Lean Model Canvas to suit us in our context, because this is how I want you to understand. The high level concept, the early adapters and all those are good, but I want us to have a clearer picture of a business plan by fusing the Lean Canvas and the Business Model Canvas together to have one master plan. And this plan is not for anybody to start any business at all. Anybody can start anything with it, okay? So please raise your hand and run me through what you are seeing on the screen right now. Please raise your hand and do this for me quickly. All right, sweetie, how do you go ahead? Um, a problem, top three problems, solution, top three features, unique value proposition, single, clear and compelling message that states why you are different and what buying what is your big promise. Then unfair advantage can't be easily copied or bought. Customer segments, target customers, existing ad, uh, alternatives. List how these problems are solved today. Who else is in this business? Who's, who else is in this business? And who are your competitors? Key metrics, key activities are you measure key partners who support do you who supports do you need to execute your plan examples suppliers of raw materials and regulatory agencies whose permission you need 
channels and customer relationship management. Path to customers. How can you deliver your services to the target market or customer segment? Key resources. What are the key resources that you need to start this business the right way? Gross structure. List your startup estimates. I'm confusing you, right? Don't worry. Go ahead. <laughs> list, <laughs> list your gross. List your startup estimate. How much will it cost to set up the business? List your operational expenses for the first three to six months to stay in business. How much will it cost to stay in business for the first three to six months? List your sources of funding for the business. What is your break-even point for the business? Calculate. Then we come to the revenue structure. List your sources of revenue. How does the business generate revenue? What revenue model works better for the business? Subscriptions or fixed income gross margin? What are the estimated projected income for the business? Very good. So this is our one pay business plan. So I've modified it again to suit our discussion and to have a clearer understanding of what I want us to look at. Of course, if you have done the first one with the key metrics and all those ones, that's fine, that's still fine. But I want us to have a comprehensive business plan. Good. Now let's start this. This, you need a pencil, you need an eraser, you need as many of these sheets as possible because you make mistakes, you think about it, you erase, you try it again, you think through it, and then all kinds of things are going to happen to you as you go around trying to build this business plan that you have. If anybody tells you it is easy to do, tell the person it's a liar. If you are faking the business, you can do anything anyhow. But if you deeply are passionate about this business that you want to run, you're going to take care of this plan as if it's your baby. Trust me. And I've done this severally and understand what it has done for me and what it has also done for our people. Okay? Good. So let's run through the whole plan. First of all, you must put a name here for your business, the business plan. So you may want to just put... Um, um, the name of your business. So let's say we keep it as GCUC Lean Business Month as our business name. So as I go along with this, you can be writing in pencil in these areas so they can flow straight as we go along with it. Now you go to the point called design for. The design for again is who are you designing this business plan for? So if I am doing it for you, I'll put your business name or your personal name in here. And a design by a design, it, it means the person who is actually sitting to design this plan. So I would put here design for, let's say, GCUC, GCUC Codel, Codel School, and then design by TK, and then date. Today is 21st, 21st day of October, 2023. Now, you see the version here. The version is what... Is it the first or the second or the third or the fifth one? And this is one of the most beautiful things that I love about this. See now, if I, the first business plan that I showed you, the 55 page plan that I showed you, imagine that your business model has changed. Something has changed about your business and you want to go back to edit or to go back to write the whole thing again. You have to go and write the whole 50 page business plan again. But for a business model canvas like we are seeing here, all you need to do is to just keep this original one that you have, version one. Don't delete anything from it. Take another version, a plain one that you haven't written anything inside, and go back and repeat and just add the new additions you are bringing onto this one. Once you have finished the second one, you have what we call the second version. This is what I love about the lean model canvas. I have about 11, 11th version. I have the 11th version. The first, the last time, somewhere last year, I went, I was going through all of them and I look at the fourth one, the fourth lean cover that I did. I loved myself. I said, what? Is it what I was trying to do that time? And for me today, it doesn't make sense at all. I mean, how can I be going to uh, primary schools, go and talk to them? To talk to them about what? 
And I remember when I started that at that point, I remember I would go to these primary schools, Uncle TK, Uncle TK, they will clap for you, they are happy, because I'm making them happy, I'm making them laugh. I'm cracking jokes, I'm playing with them, they're happy. Uncle TK, Uncle TK, Uncle TK, Uncle TK. Then I close them, they clap for me, I sit in my car, and I'm coming back home. And I ask myself, where is the money? I went to go collect funds, <laughs> we were my question many, there's, it wasn't a business. Then I have to do a second one. Can I go to SHS to go and talk to them about entrepreneurship? That same time too, that was another model that I also did. I did the same thing. It was nice because the students would love to meet me to be there. I was dancing with them. I was playing with them. I was joking with them. So at the same time, training and teaching them about entrepreneurship. Again, I drive back home with empty pockets. I said, no, there has to be another formula. I did another one, another one, another one. I eventually started training uh, university students on entrepreneurship and marketing strategies. That one too was good. I did some money were coming from the SRC, but unfortunately, the SRC were so corrupt that sometimes even take your whole semester before you pay the money. I said, no, Charlie, this one to forget. I can't work here. Then eventually, eventually, I came to where I am right now, where I'm now focusing all my attention on professionals with specialized skills who want to transform their skills and experience into a business. And I've stayed here for a long time. Even this one, I've got a new idea around that. So the beautiful thing about this Lean Canvas is that once you do the first one, you keep changing, you keep adding, you keep subtracting based on your change of vision, based on the change of ideas, based on the change in the market, market, market circle, based on what is actually happening in the market and the customers, you can gradually be changing this as you move along with it. And it's so beautiful when it happens to you. So the version is now for us on this call, we have version one. If we change, do another one again tomorrow based on the same idea, it is version two. Then the idea changes. Initially, we started doing cakes, but I think the cake thing is not doing well. So let me do bread only. You do another model canvas to explain how are you going to run this business called bread bakery. You do bakery for bread for a while. So no, let me just go and do some check, check joint, fried rice joint or something. You do another one. So you change it, you iterate it. Everyone becomes another version and you keep all this in the file for yourself. That's the first thing I want to establish. Any questions up to this point, please? Please raise your hands if you want me to clarify anything for you. Yes, um, let me get Rita on to speak. Rita, please unmute yourself and speak. Sir, it's Rebecca. Oh, Rebecca, sorry, I'm sorry. Sir, please, so with the, with the lean model, lean business model canvas, are you saying that with the first edition, uh, first version, if you you had a different thought or different idea of doing a different business, because the first version, maybe the first idea you had and you started, but another thought has come that you need not to do that one, you need to do different one. That's when you change to a, a second version, or maybe you made a mistake, that's when you change it to a second version. That's my question. Very good. So um, I, I thank you for that clarity because I think I missed them up. The version, the version one, version two, version three stays in the same lane. So for example, I didn't change my, my, my path. I started, I just wanted to train. I wanted to speak in public. I wanted to give coaching and consulting services to companies. That's the same thing I was doing. So in the same lane of the same line of business, you have different versions. But when you change from, for example, if I change from training, coaching, and consulting for businesses, and I go and do, let's say, oil and gas business. I've changed the business dynamics. So now that becomes a different, we start a different version for that one. So that the first version that I had for the training and consulting and um, coaching business will be a different version with version one, version two, version three, version four. But now when I go into a restaurant, which is very different from the first one that I'm doing, or I go into oil and gas, which is very different from the one that I was doing, that becomes, you start another version from that angle. You don't go and add this one to the original one. There are two different industries. But if we're in the restaurant business for the first version that you did, and then you had you were preparing it from, from people would come in to come and eat there. By now, to go start a delivery uh, part of the same business, you can do a version two of the restaurant one. And then you can also do another version three for the same restaurant, now doing catering services for weddings, for funerals, for parties, and for corporate events. That's another version. So anytime you are adding something new to their current existing business, it's a version. But you can do a complete new version for a complete business altogether at all. So now maybe I'm into education now. I have version one, version two, version three, version four. 
but I want to start a pharmacy shop. The pharmacy business has nothing to do with education. So I have to start another version for the pharmacy, version one, version two, version three for the pharmacy. So I now, I now have different, different types of um, canvases that I'm working for this business. All right. Um, yeah, Yenda, please go ahead. Hello, sir. Yes, please. Please, my question is, I don't understand why we are making changes to the lean business model. We are bringing that one, uh, the one from Alexandra, part of it to the lean business model. I don't understand. Is it that the lean cannot stand on its own? Good, very good question. So Alexandra brought one, and then there were some deficiencies on that one. And then Ash Maria also came out with a new one called the lean model canvas. I am seeing some, some modifications that I need to do on that one. We can keep it all right. But from what I've done with clients over the years, key partners and key resources are critical for uh, the, this very one, the Lean Canvas. Okay? Because how can you have a business without knowing your key partners? The people who support that you need. How can you run a, run a business without knowing your key resources? So I've only modified this to suit how I've come to understand business, especially in a part of the world. So we are only adapting or modifying the Lean Canvas to suit us. So anybody can keep the original ones. But for what I've done over the years, seriously, key partners and key resources are critical, very, very critical as far as this, this discussions are concerned. Of course, if there was space, we could even add all the, we could, we, we could, we could match both ones and make sure that all the ones on the lean canvas should be brought to the, the no, we should be able to merge the lean canvas and the model canvas together to make it one. But again, these guys still want us to write a one page, not two pages, just one page. Your plan has to be a one pager, period. So if you add all those ones, we are going to defeat the purpose of the one page business plan and do the other one. So you have only added these ones to help us understand the direction better. But not to say that the old ones are bad. No, they are not, they are very good but are we only modifying it to suit our contest as Africans and as Ghanaians? Oh, okay. okay, okay, thank you. You're welcome, sis. All right, let's talk to Faustina. Talk to me, Faustina. Hello, Luca. Yes, please. Good morning, please. Good morning, uh, Faustina. About the vaccine site, I want to cite an example and see whether my understanding is going. Okay. Now, let's assume that I've established a, a Kose business. Good. And I realized that the Kose business, I started with only Kose. And I realized that Kose can go with Coco. Mm -hmm. So I decided to add Coco. Am I now, am I now making a version two, a Kose as a Coco as version two? Very good. Very good example. So you are not doing the same business, you are adding something to it. Yes. Perfectly right. But okay. in the day you the day you 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 think of the Kose business is running all right. Everything is going fine with the cocoa business. But I thought, yeah. well, maybe let me start doing um, cosmetic shop. The cosmetic shop has nothing to do with the cocoa business. Okay. So you must start a complete version for the cosmetic business. Mm -hmm. And when you start a cosmetic business, for example, initially you say you want to sell cosmetics. So you get a store, you put all the stocks in there, you start selling. But along the line, you know, people are asking for saloon, 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 saloon. Then the moment mm -hmm. before you add a saloon to your to your cosmetic shop, you must do a second version of the first one of the cosmetic shop. So the one you are doing the one with the saloon, it becomes version two. Okay. Okay. Very good. Thank you. All right. Now, with that understanding, okay, I see more hands here. I want you us to be very clear with this, I'm, I'm, and we see you see what what's going to do to us. Uh, Abu Bakari, please go ahead. Uh, yes, you know, he has uh, um, okay, please go ahead. I've already told you. That's why the class is not the same. Awakar, please go ahead. Awa. Awa, please, I've already told you. Because you have please mute your microphone. Okay, any more questions? Let me see if there's anything in the chat box that needs my attention. Okay, not immediately, all right. So now let's start this. 
There are no questions now, so let's move on. Okay, so let's start with the first point. Again, let me state that you don't have, there's no, there's no formal structure of trying to do this or fill in this canvas. There's no formal structure. There's, there, there's no, you can start from anywhere. So I love to explain it in a way that suits me better. I do it in a way that makes me understand exactly what I'm doing. You can flow anyhow. So I would usually start with a problem and I'll go to the customer segment and come with a solution. And I'll just go back and forth like that. You can go differently the way you want it to be, depending on how you understand this whole concept, okay? Now, I'm going to use, I'm not going to use the relaxed and I'm going to use my consulting firm to explain this to you. So please stay with me. I'm going to use my consulting firm to explain this to you clearly how I've built my own business model canvas for what I've done for the past years and then still going and getting better. All right, I think Evelyn has um, her hand up. Let me unmute her. Evelyn, please go ahead. So good morning. Good morning, Evelyn. So I want to find out the business plan. Is it general for all businesses or when you want to start a business, you have a specific plan for it? Very good question. Business plans are the same for every business. The templates are good for every business, every industry, anything at all. So you only have to adapt it to suit you. For example, I've done you this same thing for myself, education and training. I've done it for a hospital. I've done it for a pharmacy shop. I'm currently doing one for an architect. I did, I've, I've done about five different ones this month, or, no, last month only, for somebody who is starting a salon, a world-class salon. Another guy also came here. He wants to start coastal. I use the same thing for. So the same component I use for the same, for different industries. You only have to conduct your feasibility analysis, and based on the, the information that you get from your feasibility analysis, you bring it here straight away. Okay. So if you create a feasibility analysis wrong, everything else will be wrong. Evelyn. Yes, thank you, sir. You're welcome. Please. Okay. Now let's start. What is the problem? So in the problem box, you see top three problems. It doesn't mean that state three different problems. You are stating exactly what you think is the definition of the problem that you have seen. What is the problem? And the problem here is what are people complaining about? What are their frustrations? What are their pain points? What are they complaining that they need a solution for? Today, everybody is crying about HIV AIDS. There's no vaccination, there's no cure for HIV AIDS. There's no cure. And because there's no cure for HIV AIDS, people are dying. Of course, now we can manage them to a point, but they are dying. It's a problem. There are many diseases today that people are seriously looking for solutions. Look at cancer, the devil called cancer. I pray in the name of Jesus that none of us get this disease because my father went through it. I know another friend who has cervical cancer and the chemo that this lady is going through is, is disgusting, my friends. I pray that God takes this and this thing away from us. It's a problem. So now you describe the problem that you have seen. So now let's come to my consulting firm. The three critical problems that I see about professionals who want to start their own business, like all of you on this call, number one, many of you are tired with your nine to five work with very limited income. They are tired. They are tired. So first problem, corporate executives, professionals are tired with a nine to five job with a low income. So they are working every day, every hour, stressful, all kinds of things going on, but their income is not even enough to take care of their families. Number two problem. Many, many of these professionals have tried the business and they failed. High business failure rate among professionals. High business failure rate among professionals. They've tried it, they failed. And some of them have actually vowed that they will never do any business again because they think business is too risky. Number three problem. Many of these professionals don't even have the skills to manage a business. Lack of business management skills. Yes, you are a midwife. Yes, you are a nurse. Yes, you are a pharmacist. Yes, you are an architect. Yes, you are a professional lecturer like me. But you don't, the fact that you have these ideas doesn't guarantee that if you start a business with that, you will succeed. If it was, then how come many hospitals, private hospitals are struggling? How come many private hospitals are actually folding up? How come pharmacists are struggling? How come that you started your business and you failed? So number one, many of you are frustrated with your work and with limited income, small income, not taking care of you. Number two, some people have started a business and they have failed, they are scared, they are afraid. Number three, you guys, even though you have tried it, you have, don't have the skills to do it. 
And as a result, bankers are not even willing to give you money because they know once they give you the money, you lose it. So the best bet is go and use your salary to take a salary loan to go and run a business. It doesn't make sense like that. These are my top three problems. Then I go to ask myself, who are the people who have this problem that I'm concerned about? Ask myself, who are they? Who are these people? Who are these human beings? Then I go to the customer segment or call the target market. You can call it customer segment or target market. Customer segment or target market. So now you talk about who are, the, who are these people? Then I look in my mind and I realize, yeah, it's the professionals. So my target market or target customers are professionals with specialized skills who have years of experience and desire to transform their years of experience and skills into a viable business so that they can retire into this business one day. That is a description of my target market. So I'm targeting professionals. I'm targeting people like you. I'm looking for people like you who have these three problems I've described. And then how can I help you to solve this problem? Stay with me. Just stay with me. Stick with me. Just flow with me. Gradually, you get, you get to the point. So you professionals, one, you are frustrated with your work. You are not making enough money. You try the business. It didn't work. You lack the business management skills because when you went to school, they never taught you accounting. They never taught you uh, balance sheet. They never taught you uh, profit and loss statement. You don't know about it. And because you lack all these skills, when you go even to, to the banks or the financial institutions for them to give you money to run a business, they don't give you because you're too risky. So I'm looking for you. And then once I've described these professionals who have specialized skills and have years of experience, then I can try to know what name can I give to these people? Then I came to list them down. They are the architects, he's a professional. They are the midwife, a professional. A nurse, a professional. A medical doctor, a professional. A gynecologist, a professional. A pharmacist, a professional. And a lecturer like me, a professional. So clearly in my mind, on my one page business plan, I know who exactly is my target market. Now somebody asked me, so if somebody comes from central market and wants me to help them, would I help them or not? I will help them. But when I'm going to personally go and look for people that I want to help, I may not look for them. And I chose that customer segment also for other reasons. Apart from they having these problems, these are the guys who have the money to pay me. Worst case scenario, they will use their salary to pay me gradually. So by the time they, they finish paying me, they'll have their business plan. So for example, Almost all the medical doctors and the net, no, I have uh, the, um, um, some nurses, I have more midwives than nurses. All those who came to me, we had a payment plan. So if I'm charging you, say, 100 Ghana cities, you say, okay, I'll give you 50 cities this month, I'll give you 50 cities next month. And I know these guys will pay because they have a salary to pay me. So if a central market woman comes to me, of course, yeah, I'm going to help the person, but I want to find out at what level can I help this, this woman up to. And I was shocked. Even though I'm not targeting the market, the business people in a Zoom and the uh, 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 Macola and all those people, I'm shocked how many of them are coming to me today. And when they come, they pay cash. They don't negotiate. They don't talk about UEM uh, uh, payment, uh, installment payment, nothing. I was shocked when somebody actually gave me dollars in my office. See, is that much you're going to charge? Please take it. Pa the guy went to his car, brought an envelope, just pulled $100 bill and just paid me. Just count it and pay us. And when the guy left my office, I was like, hey, Trouble don't come because I have to deliver on the guy's word because he had delivered on his promise by paying me dollars and he has to now, I have to now find a way to deliver it. What am I saying here? Please be very, very clear about your target market. Who exactly has a problem? And do they really have it? And we'll come to talk about how now do you find these things? And then especially if you have done your feasibility analysis very well, it's a matter of just bringing your feasibility analysis answers to this, this template. That's it. So now, what problem have you seen? Who are those who are affected by this problem? The next question is, how can you help these people? How are you going to help them? You are going to help them on two critical ways. You are going to help them with a solution that I've highlighted. You are going to help them with your unique value proposition. And you're going to help them with your fair advantage. These three things here are exactly what we use to now help our customers get exactly what they want. Number one, our solution. Number two, our unique value proposition. And number three, our fair advantage. What do we mean? So now you have, I have seen 
that medical doctors, professionals who have years of years of experience and have specialized skills and want to build a business with that same thing are struggling. The solution is to offer them training, consulting, and coaching in business management. So the solution that I'm offering to them, I'm offering them training on how to run a business. I'm offering them consulting on how to start and manage and grow a business. I'm giving them coaching how to start, grow, and manage a business. What does consulting mean? Consulting means that somebody will come to me and say, TK, I think my business is struggling. I don't know exactly what it is. There's something wrong with my business. I'm selling, but we are not finding the money. My staff are leaving. When they come, they go. Um, Sylvia, please, you are writing on the screen. Kindly clear them for us. I beg you. We are using this for explanation. So kindly, Sylvia, kindly delete. You are still doing it, please. Maybe it's unconscious. Miss Akins, kindly clean your, your drawings on the screen for us. Miss Akins, kindly do that for us. Okay. So what am I even saying? All right. So the solution that I'm offering, I'm offering three key solutions to this professional, my, my customer segment. Number one, I consult for them. Please, Miss Boatin, you're also drawing on the screen. I beg you, please stop this. You may be unconscious. You are not conscious about it, but please, if you are doing it consciously, can you stop it? Because otherwise, you distract the whole thing. Will be man, I won't understand what's happening here. So I give them, I consult for them, and consulting me that you come to me and say my business is struggling, my staff are leaving. They come and they leave. They come and they leave. My sales is dropping. I don't know what is happening. I'll come in there as a medical doctor to find a solution to your problem. I only consult for you. I will come in there and identify the problems why all those things are happening and tell you do this, do that, do that, do that. That's consulting. There are some times that some clients have even put me on their payroll saying that he can help me for the next three months, consult for me for the next three months, help me to fix this problem. So I'll go there like once a week or twice a week or three times a week, even sometimes every single day I have to go to the place, just go and see to make sure that the solution that I'm offering to them works for them. What is coaching? Coaching is when someone, sometimes I can write a business plan for somebody. The person loves the idea. The person has understood everything that I've given to them. But the person says, yeah, TK, I want to do this. But unfortunately, can you please hold my hands for us to do this together, to implement the ideas together? When that comes in, I am coaching you. It's just like a, just like a football coach, uh, coach training the, the team that is going, going for a tournament with. You train them. You're on the field with the people. You hold their hands. You go there every single day, every single week, every single month to hold your hands to help them to do it. So I'm on the field with you, working with you. That's coaching. So I have a pharmacy shop right now that I go there every Wednesday to go and check what is happening. Every Wednesday I have to go there. I go and check whatever I've implemented for them to see if it's working or not. There's a woman that, that sells Chalewote at the Doom, uh, at, at Roman Hill. I go to her twice in a week. I go there on Tuesday and Thursdays just to ensure that whatever I'm doing for this client is working well. That is coaching. Training is where I show you the how. Build your capacity. So for example, I can hold your hands and then sit down with you one-on-one -on -one and draw this business model canvas with you. When I'm doing this with you, I'm training you, I'm coaching you, I'm consulting for you. So the solution that I have for these professionals, the pharmacists, the doctors, my customer segment, is I'm offering them training, consulting, and, 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 and coaching for them to help them to build a business, to help them solve their problem that I've identified. Then I go to the unfair advantage. What's the unfair advantage? The unfair advantage is things that cannot be copied about you. There is something about you that nobody can take from you as far as you are concerned. What is your unfair advantage? What is your uniqueness? What is your creative potential? What is your competitive advantage? What makes you unique? What makes you you? What is it about you that I should come to you? What is the proof that if I come to you, you can help me to solve my problem that I have. That is called unfair advantage. So for example, I'll take, let me give you this example. Let's say a nurse has a crash. It's only three years old. The crash is three years old, but the crash is only one year old. Okay, a nurse, she has a crash that she's managing herself, three year old. But this nurse has been a nurse for almost 25 years. She has gone to retirement and she has built a crash and this crash is only one year old. She takes care of young little babies. And then there's another guy, another lady, who is a banker for the same 25 years. She was actually a banker and has now left a banking job or, and is running also a crash. I'm asking a very simple question. 
If your child is sick, a child, your child who is six months old, you have to leave this child and go to work. If this child is sick, will you take it to the banker who has a crash or you take it to the nurse who has a crash? Please give me the answer. Yes, Elon, please go ahead. Oh, sorry. Please go ahead. Hello. I will give it to the nurse that has the crutch. Why would you do that, please? Um, based on her, uh, her knowledge regarding sickness uh, 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 or regarding health. So you take your child to the nurse, right? Very good. Okay, doctor, talk to me. Sir, yeah, please, I'll take her to the nurse because the nurse has been trained and was in the profession so she can take care of my baby or my very child good. for me. Thank you very much. Okay, let's talk to Lydia. Lydia, what do you think? Lydia, please unmute your microphone. All right, Lydia is not speaking. Let's talk to... Same, same. Yes, please. I said same because the nurse has undergone training and she knows everything about health. So she'll be able to take good care of the child. Thank you very much, Lydia. Let's talk to Constantia. Constantia, please go ahead. Sir, please, I'll take her to the nurse because she has the background of health and also she's grown and can take care of my baby. Very good. Now, the moment, you, you, the, all the description you have given about this nurse is called unfair advantage. It is unfair. It is unfair. The fact that you're a banker and you have the nicest crash doesn't mean that you can take care of babies. But the fact that someone has been a nurse for 25 years and has built a crash, having, having been trained as a nurse, having worked for 25 years, I will take my child to the nurse because she has an unfair advantage. So in this model canvas, at this point, you're going to write what is unfair about you? What is it that you have that makes you unique that gives you that advantage to do this work and do it so well to the point that people will trust to bring their kids to you. What is it about you? Let me take mine for example. What are my unfair advantage? One of my unfair advantages is that, number one, as a professional, I try running the same business with the skills that I've had. With the, I was teaching the university. I've worked with corporate organizations before, but I failed. I failed, but when I failed, I did not end there. I sat down to read, to go for seminars, to go for workshops, to talk to entrepreneurs, to ask them, what are you doing to let your business work? Please tell me. They told me, and I built a consultancy firm around that. And in fact, when I got that information, I was able to revamp the business that field, and I sold somebody else. And then I started my own consulting firm. And for the past eight years, I am doing so well. That is unfair about me. Number two, what's unfair about me? What's unfair about me is that I am a chartered marketer. I have one of the highest levels in professional marketing. Number three, I have a PhD in strategic marketing innovation and entrepreneurship. I've learned the books. Number four, I'm a member of the Association of Accredited Small Business Consultants in the US as a member here in Ghana, but a member with them in the US. They train us, we go for conferences. I have an unfair advantage. You can't take it away from me. You can't buy it from me. You cannot copy it from me. It's my story. This makes me unique. This makes me, this makes me special. This makes me feel that I can do what I say I can do for you. So you see that by the time you finish this part alone, your confidence level would be different. Look, when I, anytime I get a chance to speak about this, I feel so confident to the point that I know what I'm talking about. I know it works. And people who have actually listened and then tried it themselves, it has worked for them perfectly. That is of my unfair advantage. So anytime that I get a chance to speak anywhere, I first of all have to state my unfair advantage first for people to build credibility with me, to understand that, well, I'm not a superhuman being, I'm not anything extraordinary, but at least I have something that I can share to bring solution to whatever they are facing. And so far, to the glory of God. What is your unfair advantage? What makes you unique? What is it about you that people cannot copy from you? To the point when they even want to copy from you, they can't. The best they can do is come and hire you. And you can go and do it for them and you charge the money for it. But you must find your unfair advantage. What is your creative potential? 
what skills are you bringing to the table? What you what what do you what are you doing so special that people want to say, mm, this guy is good about this? Look at Elon Musk. The guy says that he wants to develop electric cars. He's developing automated cars, cars that nobody will drive. You sit in the car, you just press press things, and the car is moving. How are you doing it? I don't know. Unfair advantage. If my wife is giving birth now, and you ask me to go and open her body and do CS, me, I'll run away. Without having the CS, I'll run away. I don't want to see her crying. I don't want to see her shake with that pain. I'll run away. But you guys, you just run to this baby and say, Madam, what is it about you? Say, I'm delivering. Don't worry. We'll take care of you. And whilst I bring the baby out, you are pampering the woman. You are talking to her. She's happy. And one, just within some few hours, the baby comes out. Mother is happy. Baby is happy. Midwife is happy. You have the unfair advantage. So that my, 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 my real passion for the health sector is because, look, you guys have such a strong, unique, unfair advantage to the point that if you polish it up, there's a lot you can do in the health area. And I'm saying it today. All of us on this call should never go on pension and not have a business by the side. Nobody. There's a lot you can do when, before you go on pension. But my point is that please start it now before you go on pension because by the time you go on pension, it might be too late. You have an unfair advantage in terms of your skill set. You have been a midwife for 20 years. You have been a midwife for 30 years. You have been a midwife for 35 years, for 10 years, for 15 years. You deliver hundreds of babies. Are you saying you want to go on pension and go and stay and wait and you die and go away? No way, my friends. No, 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 no. I will agree. In fact, I will, I will, I will force you not to die. <laughs> I'll come and pray for you. You have so much experience. You have so much skill that you must transform that skills and experience into a business before you die. That's what I'm trying to do. That's my unfair advantage. Then you come to the your unique value proposition. The unique value proposition. I've told you already that once I know the problem and I know the customer target, the customer segment who have the problem, there are three things, the solution, the unique value proposition and unfair advantage gives you a, a combo solution. A solution that you're going to offer to the customer segment. So we know the solution, we know the unfair advantage. What then is a unique value proposition? The unique value proposition is a single, clear, and compelling message that states why you are different and worth buying what you are doing. What is your big promise? What are you promising the people? What can you say? What one statement can you say? That the moment you say it, people will think about what you do or what you are, what you are trying to help to do to, to help them to do. For example, anytime anybody says MTN, the next statement that comes to mind is that everywhere you go, everywhere you go is a unique value proposition that MTN has given to us. And indeed, is it true that everywhere you go there's MTN? No, but we have come to believe it. They have consistently told us this compelling story that everywhere you go is MTN. Everywhere you go is empty, but it's not true. But gradually, they've been able to convince you and me that everywhere you go, empty and data. That is your unique value proposition. So you must come up with a very clear, simple, straightforward statement that describes exactly what you do based on which people should buy from you, based on which, which people should come to you. And when they come to you, they will ask you, what does it mean that everywhere you go, there's empty end? Then you explain your solution and your unfair advantage. What is my unique value proposition as far as our business is concerned? We want to be your most credible business growth partner. We want to be your most credible business growth partner. This has changed over the years, has changed several times. Even just last week, I was thinking about a different statement. And this statement is so difficult to come up with. It takes time, it takes inspiration. It takes experience to come up with a clear, compelling statement that you can give out there for people to know exactly what you're doing. It takes time. It takes time. MTN everywhere you go didn't come just like that. It came through years of iteration. It came through years of modifying and doing all that. My friends, all that we are saying is that before you start a business, you must write a business plan. You can write a traditional business plan if you want to. But unfortunately, it's difficult, it's technical, it's, it's, it's confusing. It has some jargons that, that can really confuse you. It's too voluminous, it's too big. But fortunately for us, we have a one pay business plan called the Business Model Lean Model Canvas. We have modified it to suit our discussion. And as it is now, we have just done the four, no, actually five of them. 
We know the problem. We know the customer segment. We know the solution we're offering to the solve the solution, the, the solve the problem. We know our fair advantage, what makes us unique. And we have, we have given a compelling statement that tell exactly who we are and what we do to help people. Any questions up to this point, please? Elon, please go ahead. We have only 10 minutes to go. Hello. Oh, I'm sorry. Please go ahead, Elon. Okay, sir. Um, about the, you know, I was actually following by God love somewhere uh, around the customer segment. So if you can quickly go over that for me, I'll be glad. Okay. So the customer segment is basically who are the target market? Who has the problem that you want to help them with? How do you want to help these people? Who are those that you want to help? So in my case, I am saying that I want to help people who want to start their own businesses or maybe grow their own business or maybe run, manage their own business very successfully. And my customer segment are professionals with specialized skills, people who have talents and skills that they want to use that same skill to build a business. So the customer segment is who are you helping? If we bring it to the maternity area, maternity midwives, the core target market are pregnant women. First, I mean, technically. A nurse might take care of a, of, a, of, a, of, a, of, a, of a pregnant woman, but if there's a nurse and it's a midwife, the first person who will call will be a maternity and will be a midwife. So now if you look at the midwife, your customer segment are pregnant women. The gynecologist, his customer segment is the pregnant woman, women who have uh, uh, fertility issues. So if that's, that, that's directing. If you take me, my customer segment are skilled professionals with years of experience, who wants to transform that into a business? Doctors, lawyers, pharmacists, midwives, nurses, teachers, professionals, mechanics, air conditioning repairs. These are people with specialized skills. Okay, so the customer segment explains who you want to serve. That's it. Okay. Elom, I hope that that helps. Elom? Yes, sir. Okay, Thank very you. good. Let's talk to uh, Faustina. Hello, sir. Yes, I want, I'm confused with the unfair advantage. I don't know whether I'm not understanding the word unfair. Because the unfair is like, I'm thinking it's a negative aspect. But when we explain it, it's talking about positive, positive aspect. Why unfair? Very good. It's unfair because it is something about me, which is good for me, but it's bad for you. It's bad for you because and what I have, you don't have. So it's rather the one who is generating the idea that is uh, fair to. No, the one who has the idea is the one that's fair to. That's fair to. But the one that I'm going to render the service to is unfair to the person. Very good. Okay. So not to the person, <laughs> but people who do the same thing. So okay. let's say a nurse and a midwife. Mm. And then a woman is going to give get birth. Will this uh, pregnant woman go to the midwife or you go to, she will go to the nurse? Firstly, is the midwife that the person will go to? Very good. So at this point, the midwife has unfair advantage over the nurse. Hmm. Do, you get, do you get it? And then it's supposed to be fair, not unfair. No, no, it's unfair because if we all had it, it would be fair to everybody. Okay, is the way that's confusing you? Just hey. think Think, no, just think about it in terms of what is your what advantage do you have that I don't have? Uh, that means what I know and you don't know. That is the advantage to me. Very good. Very good. Uh, and you are going to use that advantage to solve my problem. And because you yeah. have it, I believe you, I'll come to you. Uh, so that means I'm still... You, I'm still <laughs> <laughs> no worries. But, Once you understand uh, the concept, forget, forget about the English. It's just the English. Please, then another one is the traditional uh, care plan, business plan. Yeah. Is it any type of business that you can use, or a, a mask that you can use? Like, I, do, I want to know the type of business that I need to use the tradition. No, you can use it for any business at all. In fact, the traditional business plan and this canvas we are looking at, all of them can be used for any business at all, any kind of business. So long okay. as you go into business, you can use it for any business at all. Is a content that will change. Okay. Very good. Thank, Thank you. you. Faustina, please go ahead. No, okay, no. Elon, please go ahead. Elon is not speaking. Let's speak to Constantia. 
So please, I'm okay now. I was also coming to ask about the unfair advantage. Very good. Can you please explain to me the way you understand it? Let me see if I'm very clear with everybody. Okay, I understood that um, something unique about me. Let's say, I'll give an example. At the word, um, I'm able to talk to my clients, pamper them. So anytime they come to the hospital, they always ask of me. They always want to see me attend to them. So my colleagues will be jealous of what am I doing so special to them that anybody who comes to the hospital always asks to see Constantia attending to them. That is my unfair advantage over my colleagues. Very good. Very good example. Perfect one. So now you didn't go to, you didn't, you didn't go to do anything bad, but there's something about you that people love. And that's the reason why they're coming to you. So your friend, they won't understand. Now it's unfair to them, but you have it. Serious, you are going. Very good, Constantia, thank you very much. Uh, Portia, please go ahead. Yes, yeah, sir. Sir, please, can you uh, differentiate between the unfair advantage and the unique uh, preposition? All right. So the unfair advantage is what we have just described. It is something about you that is very unique to you only. You have it and nobody can take it away from you. Nobody can take my PhD in strategic marketing innovation and entrepreneurship from me. Nobody can take my association to the, with American business consultants from me. You can't take it from me. You can't take my experience as a consultant now from me. It's for me. It's unfair. So now if I get a chance to speak in public or speak to Ghana Medical Dental Council, the way I'll talk about it will be very different from the way you talk about it. It's unfair. And please, anybody here who has connection with uh, Nelson Midwifery Council and one of these conferences that you have, I really want to speak at these conferences. I want to, I want to even come to your hospitals, organize yourself together, and walk and take you through how to start, how to manage your business properly. Practical, not I mean, deeper, 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 100 times deeper than what you're actually getting in this class. Way. I want to come to your places. I want to come to your hospitals. I want to come to your, to your facilities. If I get a chance to even speak at GMA, Ghana Medical and Dental Council Conference, Pharmaceutical Council Conference, and all these big associations, I'll be very willing. Please, if you have connections, I beg, this one, day, me and you, okay? Get it. Just connect me. We'll talk, all right? Good. Now, the unfair advantage is, you know, the, the unique value proposition is, this one is a statement that you make. You make a statement. You write a statement, very short, very strong, very powerful. So as soon as people hear it, they know what you do. In English, we call it slogan. The, their slogan is this. But in business, we call it unique value proposition. What statement do you make to people that make them feel that you know what you know, you, you know what you're doing right? MTN, everywhere you go. High sense, you are to say who? So the women, they say, you are to say who? You know, say, ah, if I go to high sense, I'll get things cheaper. Malcolm. They say every day low price. Malcolm, every day low price. That's your value proposition. So when, we, when you hear every day low price, oh, wow. So if it's Tuesday, I go there, I can get low price. If it's Friday, I go there, I'll get low price. So you must come up with a statement yourself as a business owner and use that statement to sell what you have. And honestly, sometimes you might not even have the time to, to speak a lot. Your value proposition alone should be able to explain a lot of things that you do. Okay, so that's the difference between the two. So combination of the solution, the unique value proposition and unfair advantage gives you the solution that solves the problem for your customer segment. Uh, I don't know who asked the question. I've forgotten who asked this though. But if it wasn't clear, please uh, ask me again. I'll help you. All right. I better please go ahead. Okay, sir. <clears throat> sir, please, I have two things to talk about. With the unfair advantage, I, I have um, decided to understand it this way. It is my advantage, but it is unfair to the competitor. So that is how I understand the unfair advantage. Perfectly right. Perfectly yes. right. Um, it, and then, it's for me. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then the question I want to ask is about the customer segments. Okay. I want to ask if um, you can actually factor in the location. If you are doing a business and then you want to maybe... You want to target people in a particular location when it comes to the, to, to the customer segment. Yes, you can. You. you can. You can decide to target a group of... You see now, the reason why you are targeting that group of people is because that group of people on that location has a specific problem. 
For example, I went to work in a village called Robonso, in our, as a, a front plain area. Teenage pregnancy be what? I had a, I had 55 kids, uh, young ladies in my class. Every single lady in that class, age below 21 years, has more than one child. Less than 21 years, 21 years and below. So quickly, when I got to that village, that, that environment within, within just about two, three days, I noticed that that was a problem within that area. So now the problem, the, issue, the solution we are trying to go out there is go, go and have a free uh, pregnancy something education for the people. Because the way the people are giving birth is amazing. In fact, in that village, when you're about 17, 18, you don't have a child. It's as if you see a castle. The women, the young girls will laugh at you. It's like a competition. Well, it's a tradition. That's what they're doing. But is it really what they want to do? I, there was one lady who has three kids, age 22. Sam Kalami and Ubiya Papanko. When I saw the baby and I saw the kids, I knew this kid, if nobody held this girl and the, ch and the children, these people will not go anywhere in life. It's hurting my heart. It has, it's a problem for me now. So now I'm developing a solution for that target market at Drop also to go and help them. So the problem you see within the community could be a, so could be a target market for you. So they're not just individual. It could be a location. It could be a group of people. Okay? Okay. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, Alberta. Thank you, too. All right. Let's talk to Zakaria. Please go ahead. It's time. Please hurry up. Let's close so that you can go for that class. Hello, sir. Yes, please. Good morning. Please, sir. It's the problem. I'm confused there. All right. The problem is, what is it that people are complaining about? What is it that people don't, are not happy about? So, for example, the example that I just gave, I drop also. What I'm not happy about is that I don't, I, it hurts me to see young ladies, 20, 20, 20 21, 19, 16 years has a baby, no career, the guy didn't marry them, they are just walking around, the kids are malnourished, the women themselves look some way, they are dirty. These people can be my child. If they're my child, I'll be very hard, I'm very sad. So it's a problem that I've seen. So the problems are things that hurts you, you see it around people, you're not happy about, you want to find a solution to, that's a problem. Is that okay, Zakaria? No, sir, but you said that you state Three problems. Stating that three problem means that, so for example, I drop also number one. The first, the problem, the stating the problem describes the problem. So one, they are less than twenty one years. Number two, they have multiple children with multiple fathers. Number three, they don't have no career, no income to take care of them. These are the three problems I've seen. And if I don't solve this problem, it means that these kids are going to grow, become armed robbers, and come and attack all of us. Their mothers are going to do bad things. And those bad things are going to affect their children. And when the children grow up, they'll become armed robbers and attack all of us. They'll kill all of us. So what do I have to do? I have to find a solution. So when they say three problems, you are just stating, you are trying to describe what exactly the problem is. Because I cannot just say teenage pregnancy and leave it there. No, no, teenage pregnancy is not a problem. What other thing makes it a problem? Teenage pregnancy is a problem because if you don't help them to stop getting pregnant, their career and their future is curtailed, period. And if you don't help them to get out of this, one day they all become problems for all of us. I'm robbers, they'll kill all of us. That's a problem. The solution is for me to go there with midwives, with nurses, with doctors, to go and do health screening for them, to go and educate them on teenage pregnancy, to even buy condoms and share for them so that if they cannot stop having sex, at least they can protect themselves and even let them understand the benefit of using condoms. And most importantly, the day that I go to this village, I want to go with kids staff. I want to go and buy and go and probably buy one bale of false used clothing and go and open it up for the women to come and collect something for their babies. How much is the, how much is the bale of false? It's not much. Okay, so that'll be a solution I want to give to them. Go and educate them and give them material. How about if I'm going there and people donate um, sacks of um, um, soap, sacks of their diapers and soap and detergents and I just go there and give to these people. Because once I give them these items, they'll come to me for me to now help them to, ed to educate them. I can't just go there and say, I'm, I'm, I'm talking to you, stop pregnancy and stop sex. I can't stop them. They know how to do it better than I do. So I have to go there and help them to do that. How do I do that? Give them something to solve their problem and educate them. By doing that, I'm making their life better. I'm making their life much more fruitful to live. You must know the problem. You must know the solution. Okay? All right. So let's talk to Vivian. Vivian, quickly. Um, sir, please, my question is on uh, the unique value proposition. Okay. 
you talked about um, the versions that we can have a uh, version one, version two, version three. So yeah. for instance, you are writing um, the second version and you realize that with your unique value proposition, you want to make changes. Is it viable? Can, can it, is it applicable? Can, can we make changes? So don't make change on the first one. Don't make change on the first one. Just do another for one. The second, for the subsequent ones. Yes, but unless the change is very minor, if it's very minor, fine. But if the very major component that you need to change about the business, do a new, different version so they can track the progress you are making. The importance okay. of the of the version is you have to help you to track how you are growing the business. Okay. So now but I can track how I started from JHS to SS mm -hmm. to university to this and that. So I can track all that journey up to now. And you said that it's it's like a slogan. Won't it affect anything? Like, won't it affect your market? Because your customers know that this is your slogan. And during the second version, you realize that you need to make changes and you make changes in it. It's not going to affect anything about your marketing. No, it actually helps your marketing. Okay. That's why, that's why all of us know empty and everywhere you go. Okay. You see, hi, I'd rather go to help you. Okay. Okay. All right, thank you very much. Let's talk to Portia. Portia, please go ahead. Time is up already. Hurry up. Portia is not ready. Let's talk to Rebecca. Rebecca, please go ahead. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. With the with the problems, before you be able to identify the problems, it's it, do you go and then understudy the area? and look at the problem that they are having, or you go and then ask them which problem that they are facing before you'll be able to prioritize them. That's why we do the, the feasibility analysis. So the answers you get from the feasibility analysis will actually help you to do this very well. So you conduct market research, you conduct feasibility analysis, you go there and ask questions, you live in the community, you see what they are doing, you observe them, you ask them questions, you see everything about that, and based on that, you can now help them with the solution. So you must do market research, and that's what we do for the feasibility analysis. Okay. All right. Good. So I think we have come far. We did only five of those tomorrow. Oh no, no, sorry. Next week we'll handle the rest, um, and and then we'll see. If you really found value in this discussion today, up to this point, please just type the value in the chat box. Let me see. Please do. Just drop the chat box in your value, 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 value. All right, whilst we do that, let's wait for Elizabeth. Please go ahead. Okay. Elizabeth, yes, um, yeah, please. Yes, sir. Sir, please. Mine has to do with the projects we're embarking on. You are thinking of embarking on, like that of the kids you want to visit. I will suggest you collaborate with some NGOs. So the, when you go there, after giving out the education items to them, then you find them um, like maybe you collaborate with the NGOs and then find something for the girls to do. Either than that, you go there the next time you see them heavily pregnant again. Good idea. Please let's talk after this, Elizabeth. I want to talk to you about this. Thank you very much for the input. All right. All right. Docas, please go ahead. Hello, sir. Yes, please, Docas. Good afternoon. About what my sister was saying. That's why you said that you go with some midwives and other things so that. They can uh, do some family planning for them. Uh -huh. Very good. So very that's good. a form of motivation too. Very good. Thank you very much. Thank you, Docas, too. All right. So, oh, I've seen a lot of value, value, value in the chat box. I'm happy you guys are really learning. This is what I've done my business. This is what I do for other people. So and that's why I want to go way beyond the academic work. Let's go way deeper, deeper into the academic work because it will really sadden my heart if after this whole talk plenty, this, whatever, you get A, but you cannot do anything with it. I'll, I'll be very sad. So please, let's take our time and understand it. If you need my help anytime after this class, please let me know. If you call me, I'm not able to answer my, my phone calls. Just send me a WhatsApp message. I would always come back to respond to that. Okay. I see Justina. Quickly, let's just close with Justina. Justine, sorry. So please, and my question is that um, the network took me off, and I don't know if someone has already asked this question. The question is, assuming, um, not assuming, I'm a midwife, and then I've established a maternity home in uh, Keta, 
And the, the maternity home is doing very well. And I need to, I thought of establishing one in another town. Do I still need a consultant? You need, because the environments are different. You're going to do different environment and the market dynamics will be very different. So you need somebody to help you to understand that if what you're going to do in this area would work or not. Otherwise, you can conduct your own feasibility analysis to study the market before you go ahead and do that. Okay, thank you very much. All right, good. So please, let's end the question here. Um, we'll continue from next week. So please, I'm going to sh share the this recording with you. Just listen to it. Listen to it and try to understand. Start filling your own canvas. So by the time we finish next week, you'll be very clear as to what we're doing. Okay? All right. So thank you guys very much for your time and all the comments and contributions that you have made. Um, it, it, I feel really like you guys uh, are learning from this and we'll get very far. Um, it, most likely, all the, the handouts will be ready by this week. So we'll start shipping them from this week. All those who delayed and did not tell me, I'm very sorry that it's very likely we will not get the books. Because I kept asking, please send, please send your quantity, please send your quantity. And I ordered exactly that. And that's what even delayed up to this point. If you have ordered all the books earlier, I'm sure that by this time, everybody should have it. So now I've, I've just done, um, I'm going to put the list of the, those who have paid their money in order, I've done that, I'll send it to you. So when the books come, first come, first step. And I'm going to give to all those, only those who have fully paid their, their money. As, as soon as I get the books, you have paid fully, you get it. And those who don't get are those who, who didn't make full payment and all that. So we have some time this week to do all that and we'll carry away. Okay. Thank you all very much. I'm available 24 7. Just send me a WhatsApp message or call me. Let's discuss. I want us to do well. Get very good grade in this course, 90 and above. And most importantly, please do something with this. Don't let us just be talking and just be talking. Let's build a business out of this. And again, I'll be very glad to, for anybody to connect me to all these agencies and professionals that you have, the associations and all that. I would love to come. If I even get five people in your in your hospital who are interested, I wouldn't mind to start something. Just start to help you. We need about seven weeks to build a serious business, seven weeks. So usually what I do is that the first week of the seven weeks, I'll come to meet the group. And then in between, we'll do Zoom like this, but very detailed. Take my time and go detail and detail and detail. And then when I get to the end as well, I'll come. But now we have been thinking of doing three times. Before we start the, the, the workshop, I'll come. In the middle of the workshop, I come. And then at the end of the workshop, I come. So I meet face to face three times. And then on Zoom, we do four times. And it's been very, very good. I'm doing one now for um, some are great, no, um, uh, what do you call these people? Coco merchants in the Western regions. We're perfectly right. 27 people on the call. So you can put your group together on in your, in your, in your hospital, in your facility, and put some guys, your church, for example. We can do the same thing for them. And I want as many people to get well. For me, I've come to believe that the fastest, the easiest, and the most sustainable way to get people out of poverty is to introduce them to entrepreneurship. To get people out of poverty is to introduce them to entrepreneurship. But it's not that simple to just say introduce them. How do they do it? I'm willing and ready to help anybody to do this. Okay. Thank you very much. Have a good morning. Take care of yourselves and let's keep connecting. Let's keep talking on the pages. Good morning and bye-bye.